What the wealthy understand is that your financial structure is really what matters. When you're building a custom home, you actually never start with what pieces of furniture are we gonna put in the house? It starts with architecture. The first thing you do is you hire an architect and say, all right, what is the master plan of the home that we wanna build? If I told you you could go to Vegas and I will give you a 60% chance of winning, you would play every single day. If you went to Vegas and I told you, hey, go sit at the blackjack table, you're gonna win 15% of the time. Are you gonna play? No chance. Hey everyone, welcome back to AWM Insights. It's your power two today. We're missing Justin, our CFA, but it is Brandon and Eric. And here at AWM, we're a community of athletes, founders, and investors on a journey to be the best at what we do. And we believe you deserve the same when it comes to your wealth. And so each week on this podcast, we cut through the noise of what Wall Street is selling you to bring you the knowledge, the skills, and the access you need to invest like a pro. And this week, we're gonna tackle the topic of financial structure. This is a term, if you have been following us for a while, that you hear us talk about ad nauseum of the importance of financial structure and that returns are only a subset of your financial structure. But before we dive into that conversation, Let's visit what's been going on in the markets. Just within a quick week, we have seen a correction from last week. We covered that markets had the worst week that they had had since October of 2020. Fast forward a week, and now we're back to all-time highs. And so just another example of how hard it is to predict which way the market is going to go on the short term. The big news of the week, President Joe Biden announces a potential bipartisan infrastructure bill that has around $600 billion in new federal spending. This is where the markets reacted on the short term. And then the big story that is going to lead us into our conversation about the importance of financial structure is the PayPal founder, Peter Thiel, there's this article that comes out that somehow he turns $2,000 inside of a Roth IRA into $5 billion through his investment in Facebook. And for those that are not familiar with the power of the Roth IRA, any money that is invested inside a Roth IRA, you will never pay tax on ever again. So all of those investment gains, when you go to take those out, are completely tax free. So just the most powerful type of investment account out there. There are so many limitations of how to get money into it. It's a little bit of a black box for so many people. And we're going to bring that to light of how you can take advantage of that and financial structure in general. And so Brandon, can you bring us up to speed when we hear this term or we use this term financial structure? What exactly are we talking about? I think it's a great topic for us to hit on today. E. I mean, at the end of the day, you just pointed out Peter Thiel. I mean, he really pulled a Mitt Romney, right? We heard about this years ago. Uh, he got a bunch of his options that he acquired when he was with Bain into, into a Roth and, and really kind of deferred those taxes. But, you know, I think this goes back to a, a, a story that we brought up a couple of weeks ago that was released by ProPublica. Uh, on the IRS leak and the wealthy and how they don't pay taxes, et cetera. And I think that just really highlights this point. What the wealthy understand is that your financial structure is really what matters. It's the strategies um, that you can control that really matter. You know, you have all these people out there picking individual stocks or, you know, we you get we know, right, that the pros, the pros, the best in the world, the people that sit in front of their screens and, and predict the markets and pick the stocks and all that kind of stuff, they're successful maybe 15% of the time. Those odds aren't, aren't very great. I think the wealthy understand that. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of people out there that have a lot of noise. It's a great story to tell. I mean, we've got players saying they like tech and gross stocks and you should invest in this. And, you know, I'm going to read the earnings report. And it's like, dude, if you're focused on the field, do you really think you can compete on this side against the the Harvard MBAs and the CFAs and all these types of people? So, and we know that those smart people only succeed fifteen percent of the time. 
anyways, that's my rant. Um, but I think it all does come back to financial structure. So what is financial structure? It is quite simply just making sure that you are taking advantage of all the opportunities that are available to you and that don't increase your risk. So it starts basic. It starts with identifying your priorities. Pretty boring stuff, you would think. But it's that's what this is all about anyways, right? It's about if, you, if you're wealthy or you aspire to be wealthy, the reason you do that is because you want certain outcomes. Uh, so it's identifying what those outcomes are that you'd like. What are your essential priorities? What do you got to make sure that if the world goes to hell in a handbasket, your life still is protected? What do you have to have? So then it's it's starting with there. It's identifying your important priorities. OK, above the essential, what do I want to achieve and what's realistic within you know my earnings potential? And then ultimately identifying, OK, what's the discretionary? If I really have some success here, what do I aspire to have? And what all that does when you do that, you can actually quantify those things. You can understand that it might cost you know, you need to invest four million dollars today to provide a, a you know two hundred thousand dollar lifestyle, for instance, for the rest of your life potentially. So you start to put numbers to these, and it helps you then to formulate an investment portfolio. That's the pro way to do it, um, rather than just guessing, right? And having some portfolio full of stocks, you have no idea what the heck it is. You don't know when it's going to go up and down. Uh, you don't know if it's appropriate. You start to control those things. And then when you start to do that, you've got this understanding of where your assets should be. And you start looking at, hey, am I doing the backdoor uh, IRA contributions to con convert to Roths? Am I taking advantage of an individual 401k so I don't blow up that opportunity to get into a backdoor uh, you know, a non-deductible IRA contribution. You know, there are all these little nuances that I think, unfortunately, people miss because they get so excited about the noise and the stories that are going on. That's helpful. An analogy, you know, that that we talk a lot about with our clients is if you're if you're building a home, right, a custom home, and this is what you're really doing is you're you're building a custom financial home trying to achieve your priorities, right? You're trying to set your life up into how do I create my ideal life? How do I create my custom home? When you're building a custom home, you actually never start with what pieces of furniture are we going to put in the house? And that's really what investments are. Investments are a means to an end. It's what pieces of furniture am I going to put inside of my custom home to help it make it the best home? What investments am I going to put in my financial structure to help me achieve my priorities? And it can feel as us as humans, we love to think that things aren't related. We, we treat our lives very fragmented. So we see this in the deal section, right? Especially in the private spaces. I, I want to do a real estate deal here. I want to do, you know, a, a theoretical uh, venture capital deal over here that I got through the clubhouse that that everybody else has already passed on. And you start to think that the definition of success is returns. When Brandon already pointed out, the definition of success is actually priorities. And then once I've laid out my priorities, here's the thing. You want the most amount of money after tax because that's what you get to spend on your priorities. And so unfortunately, when most people approach investing, they're only worried about gross returns. And so they they do these deals and they say, oh, I got a great return. But did you factor in your taxes? And then did you also look at a benchmark? So if you earn 40 percent, 30 percent in an individual equity last year, congratulations, you underperform the broadly diversified market right? So when I think about this financial structure, go back to building your custom home. It starts with the architecture. The first thing you do is you hire an architect and say, all right, what is the master plan of the home that we want to build? Then we bring in the craftsmen, right? We bring in the, the, the master builders that start to architect a house, lay a foundation. They make sure that the right rooms are in there. So the analogy of asset location, 
how you invest and where you put your investments are going to have different tax consequences. Going back to Peter Thiel's deal is you may have heard of 401k. Well, there's a traditional 401k, which means money's tax deferred. Then there's a Roth 401k. That means it's after tax, tax free investment growth. And so the moral of the story is, is if you're starting with picking individual investments and you don't have an infrastructure laid out, you are completely pulling an amateur move. Yeah, no, I think that's a great, I think that's a great point. And I think at the end of the day too, right? Like most, most people I would think that are listening to this have an advisor. And so you need to be thinking about this. Like what are the motivations? Do they actually invest their money the same way that you invest your money? I think that's a fantastic question. Like, do they have their financial structure in place? You know, I think those are all fair questions. I know if our clients asked us that, we could pretty easily, most of our, our potential wealth, right? Our financial structure is tied up in AWM. So how do we invest our money? Well, we're going to be alongside our inv our investors, make sure that we're participating in the same things. You're not going to find us out there picking some meme stock because we think it's fun or some crypto because we think, you know, it's going to take off because we would never put that into our clients' portfolios because uh, most likely it won't fit within their financial structure. So I think that's that's just another good point is, you know, you want to find people that understand this financial structure concept, make sure that they're taking advantage of the right places to put money. Don't get fixated on, you know, somebody trying to predict the market. I haven't found anybody yet that has that crystal ball. If anybody listening to this does have that crystal ball, um, especially in the public markets, uh, hide it because you're going to make a lot of money because you're the only one. Um, but, you know, what the wealthy understand is, like you said, Eric, it's it's setting up that financial structure. What that does puts odds back into your favor. That's what this whole game's about. Right. It's if I told you you could go to Vegas and I will give you a 60 percent chance of winning, you would play every single day. If you went to Vegas and I told you, hey, go sit at the blackjack table, you're going to win 15 percent of the time. Are you going to play? No chance. Yet we see everybody play that game day in and day out. And in reality, they don't even have a 15% chance of winning. The the other learning lessons, I think this is where we, it, it's, it's the history of our firm, right? Uh, a decade ago, we're sitting uh, a little bit over a decade ago, we're sitting at the biggest firm on Wall Street. And we're like, this is, this is a complete joke right? They, they, we literally can't give advice on taxes yet. Our clients are in the highest tax bracket, a complete disregard for, for financial structure. Oh, wait a second. You, if Peter Thiel would have, would have been our client back then, Hey, that would have been nice. But B, we wouldn't have even been able to tell them whether or not to invest in Facebook because it was a private investment off the platform, right? It's called trading away. And so it's, it's these situations where so many investors are sitting in a situation thinking that they're getting financial advice. They're not. They're getting limited investment advice. And so this is why it's so important to work with an advisor who has open architecture, meaning they can go anywhere in the investment world and that their training is far more about comprehensive, integrated financial structure. The thing uh, you mentioned, Brandon, is, is like uh, – Nassim Tlaib has this great book called Skin in the Game. Does your advisor have skin in the game? Can they open up their investment portfolio and say, hey, the, the way that I'm allocating you, I'm taking the same risk. And, you know, I uh, we were talking about it before we, we logged on to this, right? I was joking around, Peter Thiel, this is fantastic. But this is exactly what we've done with our clients, right? We, we have used their individual 401ks to allocate to some of the venture capital investments. And for some of them, we've been able to use a Roth IRA. Me personally, I have a Roth IRA that I am holding my venture capital investments inside of. So, you know, this same strategy, you don't have to have some huge liquidity event like Peter Thiel to be able to put a huge amount of money in. This starts with two thousand dollars, right? These are small little wins, and we sat down with a with a retired major league baseball player yesterday here in the office, and he's got money sitting in his MLB Vanguard four hundred one k. He had never even thought about or heard of rolling that account out, and then when he's in these lower tax brackets, these first years of retirement of converting, right? Converting it into a Roth IRA is, this is what we're talking about, the power of financial structure. 
Yeah, I think it's a great point, Eric. And we're definitely belaboring it, but it, it just it's so darn important, right? It's it's realizing what money is for. It's to achieve your priorities. We'll go back to that. And then it's just setting up that house, like you said, Eric, and, and finding the right craftsmen to actually execute things and bring the real stuff that matters to the table, as opposed to some sales story about what's going to be hot. And, you know, I'm going to invest you this way and we're going to get this. Like, I mean, it, that, that, uh, that story, it's just tired at this point. And I think it's time to move on. It's time to grow up, you know, especially people listening to this podcast, you've, you've won the lottery. Uh, yes, you've put in the hard work most likely to get to where you're at and earn what you have. So why are you going to take the 15% chance of actually, you know, outperforming or, you know, put it, really just putting your family's future and financial structure in jeopardy. It's just really silly at that point. And so, you know, just urge everybody on this that's listening to this, find somebody that understands financial structure, find somebody that will sit down with you, help you identify those priorities, and then put the stuff that you can control into your lap. So that way you can make those decisions, set up your financial structure for success and ultimately just achieve all those outcomes that you're looking for. I I could not agree with you more. And I just want to point you guys to to an ing- uh, two incredible resources that are that are obviously independent of of our thought process and or not our thought process but but our firm is that you know there are just evidence overwhelming about what you can and cannot execute and win in the public stock market. And so highly encourage you, there's this book called Winning the Loser's Game by Charles Ellis that I promise you, if you read that book, you'll stop picking individual stocks. You're going to understand the importance of financial structure. And then an incredible book that, you know, uh, is really reserved for the ultra wealthy. But if you're in the highest tax bracket, this book is going to be so powerful. And it's called Goals Based Wealth Management, Goals Based Wealth Management by Jean Brunel, one of the the luminary advisors for the ultra wealthy. And so both those resources highly encourage you to check them out. And as always, we we super appreciate your guys' attention. We're excited to be on this journey with you. We would love to hear from you. Head over to awminsights.com. Drop us a note. There's tons of resources over there for you. And until next time, own your wealth, make an impact, and always be a pro. The information in this podcast is educational and general in nature and does not take into consideration the listener's personal circumstances. Therefore, it is not intended to be a substitute for specific individualized financial, legal, or tax advice. To determine which strategies or investments may be suitable for you, consult the appropriate qualified professional prior to making a final decision.